Uh, hello. 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 Welcome. Were you hearing about the chopsticks then? We're gonna, we are going to have to edit that. We are going to edit that one out. Okay. Yeah, so that's all good. There you go. Welcome. We're Dan and Mike. That's us. We're here to help you with your... Me and you. Fitness business content. No, not content. Business. Oh. We've been talking a lot about content recently. That's why. But content. this is content. So we're here. We're good. There we um, are. Won't cut that out. Leave that in. Authentic. So, so. that's what it's all about. Being authentic. Um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, before we talk about anything today, make sure you uh, hit subscribe. Yeah. Comment some. Just comment some. How am I supposed to comment before you even start the bit? I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. Just do say some. Q4. Yeah. Dominate Q1. This is probably going to come out in Q1. 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 Yeah. Are we going to do an event? It does make a difference when you say one, two, three, four. Yeah. Are we going to do an event? We are going to do an event. We've got to plan it and organize it, which we haven't discussed at great length yet, but we will do. Yeah. Um, Festival, probably. Probably be in a field somewhere yeah. in Somerset. Yeah. Um, June it'll be because that's when our photo shoot is. We'll probably coincide it with that. Do you reckon? Because we've got an off week after the future photo shoot. So I think we should combine it there. Do it in London. Um, we've got to see if people will come to it first. People will come to it. No, the people we want to come to it first. So that more people will want to pay and come to it. Uh, They're the ones we need to get involved first. Yeah. Because some big names flying around in terms of what we're thinking. Oh, those those guys. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're talking about. We'll see it's hush hush. It's top secret. It's secret stuff. We're just going to copy someone else's event, basically, and just do whatever they've done. Yeah, we're not. Not. That's a, that's a play off the last video. Obviously, we're not going to, are we? Because that's not what we would do. Um, it's going to be very unique. And no one, I don't think, anyone in the fitness industry has thought of doing something similar to this. Oh, so, there you go. You heard it here first. Just, Unless somebody comes up with it before. Make it. sure you save some money for June next year, because you might need it to come to the event. £15,000, roughly. Roughly. That's how much it's going to cost you. That's just for the night out with me and him after. Yeah. So, oh, much of tequila as He does like an old fashioned, so it costs a lot of money. I do like an old fashioned. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly because of the ice cube they're using it, because they use Too big. fucking ball in, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do, yeah. yeah. Less, uh, less, less liquid. Um, good business sense, but, you know. That's what we're doing it for. Um, this Today, one. Instagram, well, we talk about, so this is going to be twofold. There's going to be talk about Instagram stories, kind of like what things you should be posting on there, but also we do get it from, from coaches regularly. We hear like, I don't want to be on my phone all the time. No, I don't. I just need a bit of a work-life balance. Cool. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk a bit, bit about that, a bit about Instagram, how people don't want to be on Instagram all the time, on Instagram stories, talk about the benefits of being on Instagram all the time um, and why you should probably forget the idea of a work-life balance for a little while. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that, aren't we? We are, yeah. I'm just checking my screen time. What's your screen time at? Far too high. But yeah, what I've started I'm better doing... better than you. You are, yeah. But what I've started doing is because I use my... You know when I'm doing check-ins for our coach and I do Loom and I go over their Instagram, I don't always get up on the, on the Loom. I'm sometimes on my phone going, oh yeah, this was yeah. good, you did, this was good because obviously they can see it on their phone as well. Yeah. So I, I do, um, I'm going to say that some days it's higher because of that, but I am on my on mine too much for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's, uh, mine's less. Maybe it should be more, but no, it actually shouldn't because I've got ridiculous amounts of clients. Um, yeah. Yeah, so look, we'll go um we'll go in with um which one do you want to go in with first? Well I think if we talk about the work life balance bit first, because it'll go lead on, itself into then what you should be posting on Instagram stories yeah, in a way okay. people kinda of look at it incorrectly. But yeah, there we go. people people say all the time to 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 me, they'll be like, Oh, I just feel like I don't want to be on my phone all the time. I feel like I, you know, just on my phone all the time when it comes to coaching. I'm like, Well, number one, you're an online coach, so fucking you will be. You will be on your phone a lot. It's kind of like the you either you you made you made that decision the second you said you didn't want to be on the gym floor because that was the old old phone. So now you need to be on that because that's the gym floor for you now, right? Interacting with people on there, messaging people on there. You don't have to be on there all the time. You just think you are, and also you're including the time that you're just mindlessly scrolling shit and doing other things as on your phone, and you're combining that with time that you're actually working on there and spending time actually doing useful shit on there. So my my um, rebuttal to that is. Let's have a look at how much time you're actually spending dealing with clients and doing actual content stuff. It's a lot lower than you think. Um, so get rid of all the other time that you spend on there, fucking around basically on there. But is this whole concept of work-life balance and kind of we talk about a lot, is that when you decide to work from home and be an online coach, you, in my opinion, very much blur those lines. And you kind of made the decision to make your work your life in a way as bad as that sounds, if you go to an office nine to five, you have the ability to leave that office and go, well, I'm not working anymore. I am in the office. I'm in the office environment. So if you've got one of these, yeah. um, and, 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 and the, the work-life balancing, just, it just grates on me a bit because it's the people who want to work for themselves, but you speak to anyone who's successful and works for themselves. They don't really have a work-life balance. I think you have to enjoy your work enough, um, at least initially when you're trying to grow it, to have the, 
just just have the desire to grow because it's going to take over your life at certain points and it's taken over our lives at certain points undoubtedly and it will do and it's only really now we're at a point where we kind of feel like we can take some days off and kind of really kind of chill out and forget about it we're not saying like fucking work every single hour every single day but there comes a point where I think you make this decision with this job you have to accept that you don't have a normal job and that you will have to work in some hours that other people aren't and you will have to live your life in other hours that people aren't when they're working. But um, but but with that caveat, yeah, you, you don't need to work every single hour of the day. But let me tell you that people that in, are inclined to opt more towards that end than working less, those are the ones that are successful. The ones that would be willing to work every single hour of every single day are the ones that end up being successful. And and it's almost like, I guess there's diff- two different types of people, almost, almost like a glass half empty, half full type vibe you're either falling into the you know pessimist or optimist you fall into one or the other mm. and it's the the ones who are the most successful are the ones where they're the ones prepared to put in the graft and the hard work the ones that well, they're, tend- the ones that, they're the ones that say i get to work on my phone i get to work from home on my phone mm. and the pessimists are the ones that go well, i have to work on my phone right? mm-hmm. it's that whole thing in it but um yeah it's um it's it's not it's not a bad situation to be in if 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 when you're talking about work-life balance, if if the work element is in the comfort of your own home, um, seeing your kids, being around your partner, not going to work, not having a boss, uh, not having to take holiday days um, or ask for holiday days, you know, being being paid still when you're sick, um, not bad. It's, it's not bad work. And again, you chose it. Nobody nobody told you to choose it. Um, it's um, it's a, it's a str- it's a strange thing. Um, it's a strange thing. And do I think that you need to have boundaries? Yeah, I think you need to have boundaries. I think, um, you know, with clients and so on and so forth in terms of contact time and stuff, I think you need to have structure. This is, there's a whole work hard, work smart type thing. I think people sometimes fill the time that they do because they're not working smart. Mm-hmm. Like people who don't have a set check-in routine that they allow their clients to check in on any given day and then they they get back to them. The amount of people that don't run an assessment week to begin with and literally set somebody up with a questionnaire and as soon as that questionnaire is back, they've got to then write them up. And their time has been filled with um, kind of just tons of, of things that if they just organize them better, mm-hmm. if they just structure it better, they'd, be, they'd allow themselves to be a lot more efficient. And they and because of that, they feel like they're always having to work and they feel like they've got no work-life balance. But really it's because they lack organization, they lack structure. Mm-hmm. And I said this on, a, on one of our calls the other week is that if you look at the average PT um, or the average coach, their days are not necessarily filled with... Um, getting up at 6 a.m. and working all the way through till 7, 8 p.m., then I would say, yeah, okay, find a little bit more work-life balance, like probably where we are. I'd say, yeah, maybe you need to, to find a little bit more work-life balance, cut back on the work so you're more productive, your headspace is better. But that's not necessarily what the case is, is that people are getting up at 8, 9 a.m., they're going down, having a coffee, chilling scrolling instagram replying to a few messages which they class as as work i I guess it is on some level but it it doesn't really take much brain power um pot around they might do a couple of check-ins they then go to the gym stop off and get a coffee on the way there train at the gym come back come out of the gym go to tesco's do the shop midday like midway through the day beautiful um Tesco's do the shop, come back. They're doing other stuff in between. Get the hair cut. And again, they'll get to the evening and they might be on the phone a little bit more than what they might want to because their clients message them um, because the clients finish work and then watch their update at five o'clock. So they've replied at six o'clock. Oh, I don't want to be on my phone in the evening though. Yeah, but in the day you've not done anything, have you? Yeah. In the day you're, you've, your structure's not there and you've filled it with mindless stuff that feels like you're doing a lot of work, but you're not actually doing that much work. That's what the thing that annoys me about it is it's never to me it's never the boundaries or the client work that I, that you get an objection to. Mm. It's the I don't want to post on Instagram at weekends. Oh fucking hell! And I'm like, I hate and that. it's and it's the, and it, for me it's that it's because then they go oh, I just don't want to be on my phone all the time. I'm like right, well f- for one you have to be on your phone for five minutes to post something that you've saved up previously and put the work in during the week and it's not a problem. But it's that it's not it's nothing to it's never the client work that's the problem. I always get the 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 issue that I get from people is that they say it's the Instagram, it's social media. I don't want to be on social media all the time. 
Don't want to, don't want to be on my. That's what they say when they. I don't want to be on my phone all the time. And like you just explained there, their days are so sparse with work mm-hmm. that they then actually go on Instagram at seven pm and they feel like they've been on Instagram all day because they've just been mindlessly scrolling shit in mm-hmm. the gym on the way back from the gym over lunch break, whatever it is. But it gets to the end of the day when they actually have to then post something. They don't have any ideas. They haven't planned out their content. They haven't edited any content. So they have to come up with something after being on their phone all day. They feel like they're on their phone all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so it's not about being on your phone. It's that you're really bad, like you just said, with your with your time. You're mm-hmm. useless with your time. That when it comes to people, at, you actually have to post something at 7 p.m. You're like, oh, I don't really know what to post. And yeah. I feel like I'm on my phone all day. Well, yeah, you've chosen to be on your phone all day. It's not that it's been going off. It's not like you've had loads of work to do on your phone. You've chosen to do that. Mm-hmm. But then when I'm telling you that you need to use it to do some work, you're up on my phone all day. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's not my problem. That's you're your exactly problem. That. And at the weekends, the one that bugs me about the weekends is I don't want to be on my phone all the time. And all I'm asking you to do is post on Saturday morning a pre-planned post and post on a Sunday evening a pre-planned post, which you can save in your drafts on the Friday or the Thursday. And then just turn up on your Instagram stories just during the day. Like it, The amount of actual time you're going to be on your phone let's say, let's is less say, than 30 minutes. Let's say you've got 20 clients. So 20 clients, let's say you do four an hour. So you've got five hours for the week of client work. So what are you doing for the rest of your time? Yeah. Like work life balance. Well, that's, that's not a lot of, yeah. So I don't understand. I don't, 15, let's say 15 hours of content, 20 hours. What else are you doing? Like I don't, un- I, d- I, I don't understand it. Like what else are you doing with your time? Mm-hmm. Like, I know how many you, hours you do. You, yeah. You, you've, you've got to put it. Like if you don't want to be on your phone and you're looking to grow, if you don't want to post content at the weekend and you're looking to grow, sorry, what part, what what branch of the business are you willing to invest time into then? Yeah. Because it's not checking, because you've only got five hours of that. Mm-hmm. So so what element do you think that you need to spend more time doing? Well, it's got, it's got to be the marketing element of it. And marketing doesn't stop on a weekend. That's probably where your clients are most likely to well, be using their fucking phone. And this is the thing that frustrates me about it, is that we, t- we talk about this a lot, is that, we're going to talk about Instagram stories, which is why it's going to sort of segue into that, is that people are on their phones at the time that you don't want to be on your phone. You're moaning about being on your phone at the very times that most people are using them. And that's the thing that, that just blows my mind with it. I don't understand this. Okay, so the one the, the time that's best for you to market, you don't want to be on your phone mm-hmm. because they're around loved ones. They're around their you know family, their friends, whatever. I'm like, yeah, but you also decided you didn't want to work 45 hours a week in a corporate job so that you could do this job and have the flexibility. So you now don't do those 45 hours during the fucking week because you're lazy, you don't fucking do anything because we've just established that. And now you have to put some of those hours into the weekend or the evening. Mm-hmm. And you left once one PT because you didn't want to be on the gym floor late at night. So you're now at home watching Netflix with your partner and you still don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you've got the power to work from home with that phone and do whatever you want and mm-hmm. show the world what you're doing and show the world how great you are as a coach. But don't be on my phone too much. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> like, that's, that's the thing that winds me up. It's like, if, you're, if you've got 100 clients and you're full to fucking busting, yeah, you don't need to post the weekends fine because you're not looking for clients but if you've got 20 you don't have a leg to stand on because like i'm saying what what area of the business then is filling up your time like there's no excuse wasting time there, there, there's no ex, there's no excuse people will probably do it um across christmas as well we'll tell people inevitably at our check-ins this week okay make sure you do this on the 27th whilst everybody's sat there feeling bloated after eating shit at christmas and they're gonna be on their phone I want a bit of time off. I bet, I bet you we get Oh, I've, I've already said to clients, you should be planning out your content now yeah. for Christmas so that it's in your drafts, ready oh, to I post. Just, I just wanted the time off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. You just want the time off. So that means, okay, so in January, you're not going to get as many clients as you thought you were going to get. Yeah. That's fine. But people won't want to do it. People won't want to do it. And you go, yeah, but you have to see yourself as a business. What would a business do? What, what would a business Definitely do? not do Boxing Day sales and send loads of emails. I couldn't be bothered. They wanted the time off this yeah, year. Uh, exactly. DFS sale. I wanted yeah, yeah. the time off. DFS well, marketing well, manager. I just wanted the time well, off. Well, that's it, yeah. Well, yeah. Retail assistants have to work at Christmas. Yeah. Um, pubs, restaurants have to work Boxing Day. Oh, I like, want to work like balance though, mate. Yeah. So not going to turn up today. They don't go, oh, we just gave it, oh, we'll have Christmas off. Start again on third. <laughs> they understand that people are off work. Hospitality, they will understand people are off work. They're going to go out for family. They're going to make more money. It's a business. Yeah. You're supposed to be a business, but you're going to want time off because Christmas. Yeah, I just wanted a bit of time off. I'm always posting. You're not, though, are you? You're not always posting. You're not. No. Um, deserve this time off. We don't, but still. If you're that, again, it's not like you're going in to do a 12 hours shift as a nurse on Christmas Day dealing with, you know, uh, people mm. ill, you know, dying which they will do, nurses. I used to work Christmas Christmas days, New Year's Eve, whatever, when I was in the military. 
because you had to. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop because of that. But coaches, yeah, fine. I have yeah. two, week, two weeks off uh, instead. At the time of year where ev- where your target market are most on their phone because they're all off work, they're mo- more likely to see you now. They're more likely to feel shit because of how much they've eaten and want to start in January. They're more likely... Won't do it. Okay, start in January. Okay, fine. Yeah, good cool. luck with that then. And it comes on to the Instagram stories as well. Like, So so we talk talk to our coaches all the time about being present on Instagram stories and showing your life and showing your days and all this sort of stuff. And there's no better time than, than over the Christmas period. But also, as we always say to people, over weekends. Weekends, most people, Instagram story views will go up because most people are on their phones at the weekends checking their stories because they're bored. They've got more time. They're not at work. They've got more time to sit there on their phone and go through random shit and to be entertained, to have fun, whatever it is, right? And people are seriously dropping the ball when it comes to weekends with Instagram all this sort of stuff because they're not giving people an opportunity to see the real them. So it comes back to, um, I've, I've had this before on client check-ins where I've followed coaches before for weeks on end and I've said to them on their check-in, I said, I know nothing about you. I said, I know nothing about you. I don't know if you like football, World Cup's on, I don't know if you like the football, I don't know what team you support. I don't know um, if you play a sport yourself. I don't know if you do anything in the evenings. I don't know what your favorite film is. I don't know what your favorite food is. I don't know what your favorite gym exercise is. I don't know, any, don't know anything about you. And I'm like, do you think that if you were there next to another coach and I knew that coach like the back of my hand and you both offer the same service, which coach do you think I'm going to sign up with? That one. Yeah, correct. Not you. Every single time. I'm like, so what do you know about me? Well, I know you've got two dogs. I know you've got a daughter. I know you play golf. Um, that you now know I've got a Kia. I want. Um, you know what I have for breakfast most fucking days. You know what I think about people in the gym and what I think about PTs in the gym when I go there. You know I'm bald. You know I'm not very big. You know Mike takes piss out of me all the time. Like, you know these things. You know them. Because we put them out there enough. Granted, last three to six months, not as much as we should have done, which is going to change in the new year. That's whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's reasons for that. But the amount of coaches that just don't post their stuff, I'm boring. I'm, I'm too boring. I'm the so problem boring is, The problem is, is that you always think that you're boring because it's you, you're doing it. Like, you do it every day. <clears throat> it's not to other people. Like, Dan said before we started recording this, people watch Big Brother. People watch Love Island. People watch reality TV. People watch the Kardashians just going about their normal life. Yeah. People watch stuff and of course it will be boring to the Kardashians. Yeah. They're doing it. That's what they do on a day-to-day basis. It's nothing different. They sat down having conversations with their other family members. But with that, so with the, the Big Brother and Love Island and stuff like that, is everyone has their own favourites, mm-hmm. right? They're all doing the same things in there. Then you're not you're not seeing you're not seeing their lifestyle. You're not seeing their part. Well, you're seeing their partner, <laughs> weirdly. But you're not seeing the house they live in, the car they drive, the job they've got, anything. You're not seeing that. You're just seeing them interact with some other people in a, a villa. Is it? Yeah. I don't know what's it. Love Island. It's like yeah. Big Brother. Um, and you're like someone different to what someone else will like and someone else will like, but you've all seen the same thing, mm-hmm. which just goes to show you that you have to, again, it's personality driven. It's who you like, who you like. Same with Big Brother. They're in a house. I can't think of a concept in my head more boring than Big Brother. Yeah, so can you imagine that? Is it, so we're just going to basically film loads of people in a house all day and they're going to do the odd task here and there to get some food in, but literally all they're going to do is be in a house and we're going to film them 24-7 and put together the best bits for, for an hour-long video. Really? And look at the viewing figures of it. Mental. Mm-hmm. Absolutely mental. Because people like them for the personality that's in there. You don't know, again, you don't know. They, they, you don't know if they're a personal trainer, all the results they get, or whatever. You just like them for who they are. And you all have a favorite reality TV, sh- re- TV star. You need to be that reality TV star for your audience. Mm-hmm. You need to be on your stories. You need to show them what you're doing. And not just, oh, so here's my five top protein hacks to get more protein in. No one gives a fuck. Mm-hmm. They want to know what you're like as a person, what you find funny, what you don't find funny, what you stand for, what you hate, what you love, so that they can align themselves with you, right? Because you're more likely to give money to someone that you like. Mm-hmm. No one, I've never worked with anyone that I don't like. I've never paid money to someone that I don't like to work on a service with someone on a one-to-one level that I don't like. Your, your stories are your biggest connecting factor to your followers. That because that's the that those are the things that they're watching on a day to day basis where you can literally, by the way, see who's watching it. Um, so you can see who's o- like essentially opening your stuff, who's moderately interested. So you can again engage more with those people. 
the your stories is the biggest connecting link. So no matter what the number says at the top of your page, your actual followers are probably the ones that are opening up and viewing your stories on a day-to-day basis. Because it's going to be unlikely that someone buys from you that doesn't watch you on your stories and connects to you. So yeah. then you go, well, do we think then that stories should be more than just an afterthought? Yes, absolutely. Stories are not there for you to reshare what other people are putting on their feeds. That's not what your story is there for. It's your story. The, word, the, the clues in the word, your story, yours, your story of the day, 24 hours. What's been going on today, 24 hours. It is not there for you to tag, to, to reshare something you've been tagged in. Your client doing a fucking squat, okay? No say well done. Say fucking great video, good form, critique it, whatever. Your, your story is for your business. It's for your marketing. You need to use it effectively. It's to demonstrate who you are. People do not care about your client squatting or your client doing whatever. They they don't follow your client. They follow you. If you're posting social proof, post it in a proper format, not as a reshare. So use your stories, not as an afterthought. Use it as, how can I show somebody more of me? Your story should be you with a small fitness undertone. And actually, it's the things about you where people will make the connections to you that are outside of fitness. So you don't you you, you spend all of your time usually posting things that relate back to fitness or clients this or clients that. That's so one dimensional. You need to be three dimensional with this stuff. You need to show what like Dan just said all of those things. What you like doing, what you don't, what your hobbies are, what your interests are, what your sense of humor is like. You need to come up with running themes. Again, Steve, who's done really well as Dan's client, he comes up with this thing where he hates black coffee or something. He's a cut, cortado fucking drinker. Dan posts scrambled eggs. I've done various things over the years where I had a fucking cardboard cut out of Ainsley Harriet. Call myself the Omelette King. Call myself Nutrition Jesus. Had running themes, running jokes, standing jokes that are not actually anything to do with your job, but things that create an element of engagement banter humor people fucking know you for it people associate you with it like like Dan just said they know he's got they know he plays golf they'll give him a bit of stick about that they know his missus can't cook again he'll get into interaction engagement over that it's all of the things that you wouldn't necessarily think you need to post as an online coach but they're actually the things that are most important because those are the things that people connect with most people don't connect with you doing a hack squat because your clients probably are not training as hard as you do in the gym yet because their their passion isn't fitness yours might be but theirs isn't so you need to align what the things are that connect the two of you sense of humor the stuff that you do outside of fitness whether you're a parent whether you're a dog owner what you eat how you cook it like what music you listen to what football team you support like all of those things are the things that create the conversation on a on a level outside of fitness, and then people know you're a coach because it fucking says it in your on, in your fucking bio and the fact that you're posting fitness related stuff on your feed. People know you're a coach, and the majority of all that stuff you've just mentioned happens evenings and weekends. Mm-hmm. And it comes back to this whole thing around like this work life balance is that people need to see more of your life, so talk about the work life balance thing is it's like it's blurred with this job it is blurred you have to show your life you will have to get your Instagram stories out in an evening because there's opinionated stuff that's on at the weekends you have to show what you're doing because that's when you'll do the most of it like if you want to be successful that's what's required it's simple as that like the people that do the best in this and the clients that we have the most success with are the ones that turn up every single fucking day doing this stuff biggest arguably the biggest fitness I guess person in the world who is it James Smith. Maybe. Okay, so what did he do on his on his stories, or what does he do, or what did he do whilst he was growing? You know that he moved to Australia. You know that he drinks. He started to skateboard. Uh, he wear, wears budgie smugglers. Uh, you know he's t- t- taken drugs in the past. You know that he used to play rugby. And um, you know who his mates are. You know who he knocks around with. You know who he room shares with. You know that he used to PT in. He's for, from fucking Berkshire, Bracknell. Bracknell. Um, Yately. Yeah, Yately. Um, he's got a dog now. 
like funny stories. You you know, you know all of those things. Is skateboarding anything to do with online coaching? No, nope. yeah, but at no point as well did he go. Oh, it's this week I just want to go surfing this weekend and leave my phone behind. Yeah, do you know? Like, like no, do you know what I mean? It. Like yeah. skateboarding, it's got nothing to do with it. No, yeah. nothing. Doesn't like still post it. Does taking drugs have anything to it? No, but still honest, open, relatable, like um, yeah. building trust. You think of all of the things that the people that have been the most successful do, and it's that. Yet people are unwilling to do it. They'll do two reshares of something on their stories. They'll post three times a week and go, well, why is it get not nothing in. successful? Yeah, get, get nothing, nothing in, in again. Yeah. Don't one, expect One week it. of getting nothing in. Yeah. yeah. That's there the you thing go. is, is it, you've, you've picked a job where you have to share your life. You've picked a job where to be successful, you have to share elements of your life on social media. So if you're not prepared to do that and you're not prepared to be on your phone at, at times when you don't want to be on your phone, then don't do it. Don't do it. Be a PT, be a one-to-one -one PT. When you get to go home, you can turn your phone off and not look at Instagram and work till nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night doing sessions with clients because that's when they can train. Um, do it that way. I, li I listened to James Smith on a podcast the other day, actually. And my, it was Mike Thurston's podcast. I yeah. listened to it, like both of them. Obviously, both content creators. And what you see as, an, as a coach is that them, them posting once per day. But what you don't see is the effort that mm -hmm. goes behind it all and the fact that, like... it. Obviously, even to, even to us, you look at Mike Thurston, for example, looks the way he does, so on and so forth. Even hearing him go, there's loads of times where I fucking can't be bothered to get get on and put this fucking act on on YouTube, but I have to do it because that's my job. Like, you literally hear him say that. And, and it's like, that's his job. He's, he's correct. It's yeah. his job. He's having to turn up and do the things that he doesn't want to do. We don't always want to do it. We're not saying that we want to post on a weekend or post in the evening. Dan doesn't give a fucking toss about taking a photo of his scrambled eggs. Do you think that that makes him the most fulfilled human in the world, posting a picture of his scrambled eggs? No, he does it because he knows he gets engagement from it. You have to do the things that you don't want to do because it's your job to do it. We're also here filming on a Sunday as well. You know, just Sunday. Grinding, isn't it? Yeah. But how many people would do that? Anyway. Yeah, like it's, it's, yeah, like I say, it's just, um, it's so obvious to us, right? And, and that's why we're doing this video because to us it's just blindly obvious. And I think... Again, it comes back to the whole thing we talked about in a previous video where if you to pick out all these famous people that have been really successful, do you think they work weekends? Yeah, they did. Yeah. You might have to work a weekend, by the way. So just get over it. Mm -hmm. End of end of uh, end of video. There we go. Like it and stuff. Share it with everyone. So. Yeah. Make sure you work make sure you work this weekend. <laughs> That's it. Done. Done.